Hello, I'm Michelle Arquette Palermo. I'm the head of the Freshwater Forum at Cranbrook Institute of Science. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I live in Orion Township. One of my neighbors and most favorite people on the planet is Dr. Faye Hansen. And she's the director of the uh, Student Organic Farm here at Oakland University. She's agreed to show us some tips uh, that we can use to make our own personal gardens organic where we live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy to do this. So I'm going to show you uh, some stages of gardening uh, and how you can start from nothing uh, or start from a bed you already have. Um, and so here inside our hoop house, um, which is the area we can start first in the season, um, we've got a number of beds at different stages. So I'm going to pretend we have actually prepared this already but it's gotten weedy again because we haven't planted it out so I'm going to pretend like we've not done anything with it mm -hmm. but over here we just planted yesterday some tomatoes and then we intermixed some kohlrabi on one side and some scallions on the other side um, and then over here you can see what looks like weeds in some of these rows but we've added some cover crops there's some buckwheat here and there's some clover, look, well, what looks like weeds. It's actually white clover that we've put down to help with weed control and also fertility. Uh, it's new for us this year. We haven't done this in the hoop house before, but it helps keep the soil healthy, uh, helps put nitrogen in the soil, which we're excited about. And healthy soil is where we start everything. Okay? So we've had soil tests and we've had advice on um, from the experts about what amendments to put in and we've already done that but how we would have started um, is we would loosen the soil and the first thing you want to do is aerate your soil okay so we've done this already so it's pretty loose but you can have a nice digging for like work like this okay and we don't want to turn it over we're not tilling it we just want to aerate it get it nice and loose and there's this neat tool that people really like when they hear about it it's called a U-fork, oh. and if you have a good sized garden, it's really handy. So it uh, works like this, it goes quite deep, about a foot deep, aerates. So we want our soil to be aerated because the roots, even though they're underground, need oxygen. Okay? And the micro soil microbes that we want to stimulate also need oxygen. So. Um, and also it helps us be able to get the soil loose enough for our weeding. Okay? So we have a number of weeds that are pests for us. One of which is this one, which is quackgrass. We have to be very careful with quackgrass because it has rhizomes. And I think I might be able to get close on this. Um, the rhizomes can be very um, invasive and so we try to find the end of the rhizomes and actually dig them out we've already done that once but um, these rhizomes can just go long distances and every about inch or so they can poke up some new grass and you don't even know you have very much until it's all there so we've done most of that already but this is what we would do try to get here's a good long one to get as much as we can out of there because what's left in the soil is just going to want to grow back bigger so try to get that out a lot of the other weeds um we're not concerned about and we would just till them in and they add the green matter just adds a little nitrogen to the soil okay if they're not uh, plants that are invasive and rhizominous we'll just till them in and so we would have aerated and we did weed again right before we plant and then um, after we've aerated we will add the amendments that are recommended by our soil test could be a lot of adding minerals um, but for our fertility for organic we use alfalfa uh, as powdered alfalfa as our uh, nitrogen source and then during the season, if we need to add more fertility, we usually use fish emulsion. That's a high, or we could use blood meal or something like that. So they're good organic 
methods of having uh, fertility added to your soil. We really like to um, have a lot of organic matter. We've had compost, add compost in here. We've added some worm castings. Um, and so we have a pretty good healthy soil now that we built over several years and build in whatever organic matter we can. Okay? So there's no need to necessarily take all your weeds except for flat grass out to the compost because you can actually till it in and it helps helps your soil. So um, then what we would do is get our irrigation ready. So we're going to rake this out. Say we're done with it. We've added our amendments. We'll kind of mix those in, rake it out nice and smooth. Okay. So we do more weeding, of course. And then we use, not everybody needs to do this in their home garden, but we do use a drip irrigation line that you see here. And the idea here is that the drip, um, we usually have the drip tape we just planted yesterday right beside the stem of our plant. And so the drip gives us a nice steady uh, irrigation that goes straight down to the roots and uh, doesn't actually spend water in the areas that, that are gonna grow weeds. <laughs> and now part of the reason that we add other crops in with things like our tomatoes, uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, first, we wanna have a canopy. These are faster growing. You're gonna create a canopy and that canopy is going to keep the weeds down. Okay, uh, tomatoes will grow up. And we're going to trellis them. They'll be like take us whole over after a while. But we also like to have different varieties, different species in here, such as these scallions for pest control. Um, we have a variety of different uh, onions. Onion things in the onion families are good for pest control uh, because. Some of our pests in, that find these really like our kohlrabi. You can see um, our first planting of kohlrabi has been discovered. <laughs> and so we are uh, hoping to, to not have that happen again. Um, but we also try to mix in some flowers. This bed here is going to be a bed of snapdragons and flowers. So we like to have flowers to attract pollinators and add biodiversity. You might wonder why we have all these flowers here. Um, this is our last year of kale crop, and we let it go to seed. And actually, down here, we have our last year's Asian greens. Uh, there's some uh, hot choy, and I <laughs> can't remember what this is. <laughs> It'll come to me. Anyway, they're in the cabbage family, and they go to um, seed fairly quickly in the spring. So we're letting them go to flower and we're going to collect seeds from these little seed pods that you see here. Okay. And this is full of seeds and then we'll save those and replant them. Okay, so we have a famous kind of uh, collards that we've developed here at the farm. We call it the OU special variety because one year we did let our kale and our collards both went to seed in the spring because we let them over winter. Um, that's good for the soil, to keep the roots in. And they hybridized, and so we got what we called Kalerts, the OU Kalert crop. So we sort of invented our own little seed saving experiment. So we have a little bit of that going on too. So um, one last thing I'll mention that is in progress right now is potatoes. Now, most people wouldn't plant potatoes in the hoop house but we had some students this winter that we wanted to keep busy, so we did. And I'm gonna show you, um, we, potatoes are a cool season crop and you can start them fairly early in the spring outdoors, but I have to come back to this item. Potatoes, uh, most people, a lot of people don't think of growing potatoes because they seem like just such an average crop that you can buy in big bags at the store. They're a great storage crop, but they're really easy to grow. And if you've never had homegrown organic potatoes, 
you don't know what potatoes should really taste like. Everybody is just nuts about them because they don't taste like the potatoes that have been in storage for a year. So potatoes are in the same family as tomatoes actually and the, the tubers actually grow off the stems and so we want to keep the, the stems underground and in the dark. So we just mulched them yesterday. Sometimes we do what's called hilling uh, with dirt uh, keep the, the stems underground or in the dark and then that will uh, allow us to grow more potatoes. Now I would mention one other thing that I should have talked about with the weeds but we're going to be doing this all spring uh, or all summer is weeding. Weeding is the organic farmers uh, <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> That's why we like to have a lot of volunteers out there at the farm. I'm going to show you this device that all of our volunteers really love and that's the thing that I left behind back there. So this device it comes in different sizes but it's called a stirrup hole. Looks like a stirrup you can see. And it is a wonderful thing for weeding. And uh, you can just, it just carves off the weed. It's kind of got a sharp edge and it carves off the top of the plant and separates it from the root, okay? So you could just go like this. And there it is, no bending over, just go really fast. grow back and then we just work those plants right into the soil. The one caveat about that is we should do it while the soil is a little bit dry. We don't do this after the rain because the weeds we dig up will just decide to come back to life. So this and the U-fork or in the view of other work than the U-fork, a really nice digging fork like this are really good tools to have and the other tool is a nice digging tool like this. So it's pretty easy. Uh, plan out a garden and mix up a bunch of stuff and enjoy the harvest. <laughs>